Alrighty, this is the next video of this collection series that I will be working on. This series I'm calling is a security series. This is not just firewall virus scan. This is a lot of best practices, a lot of things that a lot of people should be doing, should know of, should be aware of that I'm sure a lot of people aren't. Number one thing that I brought up is physical security. I mentioned it before, I think the last video I got off subject, so I'm going to jump back here and talk about servers. I got off subject when I got into it, but the scenario I brought up was a business that had the server on the outside of a secure room, had it out front next to the receptionist computer. To me, that's silly. Anybody can break in that office, anybody can get into that server whenever the receptionist isn't there. You should have all your servers in a secure room, hopefully one that nobody is actually going into at all. Number two for physical security is a camera of some sort on that server so that in case you're closed for the weekend whatever you want of the scenario holiday whatever someone isn't physically there to see someone enter that room <coughs> that should be also locked not someone that can just go open the door and go into Number three, I would actually have it in a secure, lockable rack. They make them. Different sizes, different cabinet forms, ones that mount on the wall that have, you know, 24U config con configurational, up to full towers that will stand from the ceiling to the floor, that will bolt in to the floor, to the ceiling. Um... You know, if you're in a place that's earthquake country like California, um, someplace, I don't know, Florida, back east somewhere where you might have hurricanes, you might have floods, you can actually get them that mount to the wall. Let's say you have a business and you're in an area where you think it, or you know it floods, and you get a foot of water, two foot of water on a major storm. You don't want that server on the floor. Not to mention, it's a horrible practice to put it on the floor. You don't want, you really shouldn't put your computer on the floor because of the static electricity, especially on carpeting. But a lot of things say that it'll be fine on the floor. But you got best standard practice that you should follow. Put a wood block under there. Put a brick. Put computer stand. Anything to just get it up off the floor. So, going back to the server. If you know there's a chance you might get a flood or you might get rain or you have a maintenance crew that comes through and mops and they're slob, you know, and slops water all over and Mount it to the wall. Mount it halfway up the wall, about four foot off the floor. Mount it to the ceiling. You can mount it wherever you want. You can get a full rack that bolts to the floor, that has a rail that goes across that you can run all your cabling in and down. That's what a true IT professional room looks like. It has a rack with a rail. You run all your wires across, down, in. It's all cleaned up, zip tied, not zip tied, sorry not practice anymore velcro wrapped so that it's all nice and secure 
all these things can be done. Power cable separated from your data. You know, all these things can be done on this things. UPSs. If you mount a rat, mount one to the wall, halfway up the wall, and you don't have space inside for a UPS, you can always put it on the top. If you're using a standard UPS. Depending on what kind of equipment you have in there. <coughs> you can actually buy them deep enough where you can mount a rackable UPS. That would be enough power for your server and all of that. Not to mention, it's super secure. You don't have to worry about someone going in there because they're mad at you because you didn't give them a raise. Maybe you fired them. It's a disgruntled employee. Whatever scenario comes up. Maybe if you're in a big building and there's multiple businesses in the same building. And some might actually share the same server. Because now you can do virtual servers and all kinds of other stuff in one device. That you might end up having another business disgruntled employee <coughs> go in there and maybe unplug it. Because by the time that business figures out what happened, get support, get someone to go check it out, that might be a day or two, maybe even longer for them to figure out. Why they have no communication? Why they don't have internet? Why they don't have, you know, whatever goes through there? Why their emails aren't working? <clears throat> because I'm sure most businesses that don't have a full IT support, if your email stops, oh, it's just my email provider, let me try to figure it out. But what if your internet's down? All down, completely. Because that server controlled your internet, controlled everything. Because there's multiple virtual servers in there <laughs> that are doing multiple jobs. It might take you a while to actually figure out, damn, is it the server? Well, we have, it's on a battery backup, right? We got electricity, right? Yeah. You go check breakers, everything's on. But what's going on? Guess what? You got to get someone in there to check it out and, you know, you could be down for a week. And then the ultimate thing is, is if your business is affected somehow because of another business's jobs or what happened, that that guy went and shut down that computer and say, you lost your internet, but you didn't lose phones. But you have connectivity in the office because you have your server in your area of your building that has your data. But you talk to the other, oh yeah, we're completely down, and, but you're up and running. You're going to have scenarios there that you might take a long time before you guys figure out, oh, it's because this thing got shut off. So that goes back to the whole physical security of where you actually put your devices. These are just some scenarios I wanted to bring up because I brought up the one rough detail and I went into some other things that, that really I've seen over the years that I went, oh, why would you do that? That I got off track. So, I wanted to get back to my original thoughts and my original thing that I wanted to cover is the actual physical location of where you put this stuff. Other video I mentioned the hotel that had the Wi-Fi mounted to the wall in the room. That's ugly. That is very ugly to do. But, they make devices that will hide that 
look, plexiglass boxes. There's other things that you can do. Put it up in the ceiling at least. Get it up out of the way where someone can't actually physically get to it is the key point. You know, because even if Let's say that's your last scenario. You have to do that because you have no other thing you can do. Make sure you have that secure so that someone can't use that to get back. Here's the kicker. You gave me Wi-Fi. Right? Uh-huh. I don't have to truly unplug that Wi-Fi router that's mounted to the wall. The only reason I bring that scenario up is depending on what kind of Wi-Fi router. If you have a business edition that has a firewall and other things integrated into it, that helps to protect your network beyond that point. If you have just a simple home firewall, or not even home firewall, simple business grade or simple Wi-Fi access point, it's the same thing as giving me that cable and handing it to me in my hand. That's one of the scenarios I want to point out, especially for home users. There's a reason why on a Wi-Fi router, there's a guest network. New routers have a thing called a guest network. Guest networks keep the guest off of the main. They don't see each other. They don't communicate to each other. It lets them have internet access. It gives them a separate channel out. It gives you a separate channel to communicate. Just one thing I wanted to spit out right now. Um, it'll come out more later on with security stuff that I'll be doing. But since I was talking with that point, I wanted to spit that out. So, goes back to the physical security. To the server. So, you went from having that server sitting out front by your receptionist now into a room slash closet slash calm room whatever you want to call it into a rack mounted to the wall hopefully with a battery backup a UPS a lockable cabinet could have glass front could be a mesh front could be mesh side solid sides a million different versions some of those racks actually have an open back where you can run the conduits through up into the wall or you can get one solid. These are all things that you want to consider when you put this in. How secure do you want to make it? If you have that bolted securely to the wall really well where no one can get it off I really don't see a problem with having a open back except if you can get the closed back and you're not running anything through the back it would make that cabinet more secure you have more metal more points that that cabinet can't bend should be more secure because now you have this corner tacked to that corner it can't move that you have that extra support but once you get anything in there and you tie into those rails, it's going to get pretty secure. But just a thing as a best practice to be aware of. So once you take it from that front location and you put it in a back location, you have a locked door, a locked cabinet, locked mount, whatever you want to call it, that's pretty secure. Just make sure you secure those keys somewhere in a secure place. If they're in your pocket, if they're in a drawer in your office that's locked, and there's another key hanging up, 
that's the other feature I'd bring up. Don't forget, you want surveillance. You want to see what's there. You want to see who's getting in. You want to see who possibly has a key to that door that can get into that room. But they might not have a key to that unit, but you want to see what's going on in that room. If you have a key that has access to that, I would recommend a camera on that area to see who has access to that key, who's going over there. Because someone can always go over there and take that key and make copies and put that key back. Now the person who made the copies may not be the one accessing the room. That goes back to multiple businesses in the same building. You might have shop C person who makes a key, but it might be a shop B person going in that room because they know each other. They work next to each other. Just physical security. This is the physical security of where you place your stuff. Laptops, I've seen people leaving them out, walking away. Make sure you have your password. Covering that next. They make locks, like a bike cable, that you wrap around the leg, it goes and connects in, has a key, locks to that laptop so someone can't pick it up and take it. That may be something you may want to consider as a physical security. If you have workstations and you're not using tower computers, but you have a laptop that stays on this workstation, person goes home, leaves, that workstation stays there. You may consider running one of those lockable cables down somewhere, securing it to that laptop. Because it goes back to these scenarios, capital riots, Black Lives Matter, people getting into businesses, taking whatever they can take. If you have that locked down, yeah, they might be able to cut it or rip it loose or whatever, but it's a security that you know you had. Maybe they'll look at that and go, oh, yeah, pff, I'm not going to mess with it. I'll go do something else. But that's just one more point of security that, for one, if someone sees that and they're going man if they did that what else you know is a password is it encrypted is it you know is it uh cmos locked is it bios locked is it hard drive locked is it you really start to question he went this far just one of the factors you know plus if you have it locked where it can't fall off and fall on the floor where your employee won't drop it that's a whole nother factor. So, these are just some of the things that I know they pushed and pushed and pushed a long time ago, but I'm not seeing any of these practices used anymore. Um, just with everything that's gone on out there that I'm just like, you know, like, I scratch my head like, if I worked in the Capitol building and all that, wow I'm like you know where would I even start how would I get going what where would I start you know is you'd have to look at all your security you'd have to look at you know what computers were on what what someone might have had access to what were open what should have been locked you know were they password encoded were they there's a lot of things that I'm sure they're now going through these procedures going, okay, no more of this. We got it. Because this was not a scenario that I'm sure you as an IT person or even a home user would have thought, oh, crap, this could happen and what would we do? You know, there's other scenarios out there that, you know, the marches in California where they broke into pharmacies and they stole everything from the pharmacy. That pharmacy computer. 
you know, what kind of data did that have on there? You know, not to mention just all the drug stuff that could be on there that might be valuable to someone that you wouldn't need it, I wouldn't need it, but it might have some kind of value. So, not to mention the computer itself might have been a really nice computer that had value. So, these are kind of this, the things that have kind of run through a lot lately that I'm like, these really need to be brought back out again so that people understand these things so that in case worst case scenarios happen, you're covered, that you understand what's going on. So, I think these three videos have gone on long enough for pretty much an intro, except for this was physical security on a server and laptop scenario. But next, I will be doing login. That will be the next one here. Um, let me wrap this one up and get going on the next. Thank you.